if $12 a week is going to get us over that hump of not going backwards anymore, then we're not doing it really, really tough. We're a little bit behind. If, it's, if we are doing it really, really tough, then $12 a week ain't going to do anything. So I've been sitting here going like, this government can't have their cake and eat it too. Either we'd be, we're doing it really, really tough and they need to help more, right? Or, yeah, we're a little bit behind, we're a smidge behind, and that little bit they give back will be what we need. And it feels like they're trying to sell this, 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 you know, cost of living crisis, what Labor did and what we are, we're going to fix it all. Here's $7.50. You know what I mean? It just feels weird. Well, I mean, but this is their big centerpiece for their election, right, in 2023. It was their big centerpiece. And we saw the, you know, $2, uh, $250 tax cuts. Well, for pensioners, it's like $2.15 or $2.50. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've had pensioners just actually email me tonight mm -hmm. basically saying, I can't afford my rates. I've only got a $2.50 increase in, through tax cuts. Can you do something about it or else I'm going to lose my house because I'm on a fixed income, you know, and then you prescription fees, the universal, they've scrapped that with the universality. My gosh, public transport, any of you that got kids that used to catch public transport, you know, it's going to cost 40 to a hundred dollars more an extra a week. So yeah, it's, it's basically they've cut so much, which you can kind of understand if you basically kept the stuff and then gave a tax cut, then you might feel a bit better off. Yeah. But they've cut so much, they haven't helped by removing the affordable water reform. So councils were in basically their hands were tied. They had to basically release their long-term plans with double-digit rate rises across the country. And so yeah. come today, 31st of July, apparently they're meant to be getting a tax cut. It's like, well, I haven't seen it because actually I'm in deficit because everything else has gone up. And, of course, on top of that, uh, if we want to call them their passion projects, uh, we're going to keep saying this all term, the government's giving $3 billion back to landlords and borrowing so they can do $14 billion worth of tax cuts. It's now, borrowed money. It is yeah. just absolutely borrowed money. doesn't matter how they spin it. They say we've cut all these public services. I heard a really good quote from the chief economist of Westpac quite recently, and he said, you cannot cut your way to a surplus. You know, and the same counter is you cannot tax your way to prosperity. But what this government has done is just, oh, it's just rubbish. And I think people can see right through it, which is why nobody's buying the whole woohoo tax cut day because it just feels really crap. Well, that was going to be my last kind of question of this part. Then, Chewy, of course, you can jump in. I'm being very greedy here. Is that one of the things this National Party has done is they've done very well selling a bunch of bullshit, like lumbering Labour with the um, how 15-year-olds are doing in schools, not reminding everyone they bought national standards in in 2011. Like, but, but from a marketing point of view, they did very, very well because they got it. They, they, everyone believes it's Labor's fault, without question, right? Well, I don't, but you know what I mean. They, they did well with a, this one feels different. It feels like that people haven't bought into this as much. They haven't sold it as well. Are you seeing, do you hear a disparity between their messaging and what the public think about tax cuts in particular? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't think anyone's buying it. I, I really don't. And then when you see people, you know, because I've got social media platforms as well, when you see the comments from people saying it's a really great thing, well, you go through and you have a look at their profile, it's locked and it's a troll. So yeah, I, I, I haven't seen anything. The, actually, one of the key things I'm hearing the most, and I even heard this at the rugby, we had the big Wellington rugby finals here on Saturday. I had a small business owner who basically said to me ages ago, he goes, I'm a national party voter because they're better for business, but I'll vote for you, Bob. And he goes, I don't know why they need to give me a tax cut. Like, I don't need it. And me and all the boys are like, put it into health because they yep. can hear. All, and you've had Aisha on with all the spin that's happening in health. So, yeah, I don't think New Zealanders are buying it. Well, that's it. I know I said I'd finish talking, Chewy, sorry, but if you put everybody's $10 a week or $15 a week tax cut into the storehouse, so to speak, you know, that's probably Dunedin's hospital uh, to its maximum capacity rather than cutting. That's probably a bunch of uh, nurses or doctors or that they don't have to do. And, and that $10 in the storehouse is worth so much more to the country than $10 per individual person. Oh, and don't forget also they put aside $216 million tax cuts for uh, tobacco excise tax, you know, they cut yep. that. So if you add up all their priorities, including the billion dollars that they clawed back from tobacco, unwinding the tobacco rules, 
yeah, it just shows where their priorities are and basically what their focus is, and it's not actually helping with the cost of living.